Cheers, Jens. Uh, the difficulty is uh, choosing which fuck up to talk about, <laughs> which ones. But uh, um, I was actually originally, well, thinking about a couple more recently in the entrepreneur world, and I'll come to those. But the first fuck up that comes to mind in my career, because I've only been in the entrepreneur world for about two years now. So I've spent about 20 years fucking up in companies. Um, and, and the first one that, that came to mind was when I joined um, uh, what was Kerry Foods making the sausages. And I came in as a relatively young uh, engineer graduate, and I had my my notepad and my pen as I always did, and I just stood there and made notes on people. And I actually had a team of about five or six guys doing the meat prep, we were all mixing the uh, the specialist sausage ingredients, and uh, I just watched them. I didn't even introduce myself. I just watched them and made notes, and then got them in at the end of the day and said great news guys i'm going to make you more productive because we're going to change your change your uh the way in which you have your breaks and who's going to go when and who's going with who and uh, i had to unfuck that pretty quickly shall we say because uh that was a, a big lesson in that i've taken beyond that world which is you, you know just give people respect you know and, and talk to them first and, and know what's what and that's equally if not more important in the world of uh, of entrepreneurs but uh the two more recent ones that have come to mind when i first moved into the world of entrepreneurs having spent 20 odd years working for people i completely underestimated the fact that all of my work throughout my career had been brought to me people had gone out and they'd spent time and effort to get those clients in front of me and give me the project and give me the work that was there um and i thought it would be similar. I knew there was a bit of work involved, but uh, I thought I'd just go right. You know, here I am. I'm, I'm Paul. I've, I've worked for McLaren. I've worked for Kerry Foods. I've worked for Fonterra. I've worked for all these massive companies. Uh, here you go. <laughs> and it made me realize two things. One, nobody knew who the fuck Paul Teasdale was. <laughs> and, and secondly, you know, my network was my social network plus my people who I worked with. And I think as an entrepreneur, the thing I'd like to do more, and, and Jens has been a big accelerator in my world here, I'm sure he has with everybody else on this call as well, is that you need to expand your network and you need to expand your network to different groups of people. If anybody is ever either going to collaborate with you, buy from you, talk to you, mentor you, whatever it might be. And so that was a huge fuck up in my early days, thinking that my network was big and that I was the names that surrounded what I'd done in terms of the businesses I'd worked with would work for me. Um, and that is not the case, shall we say. <laughs> and I learned a very hard way on that front. Um, and the other thing that came to mind is one of the first things that I did, where I had a an easy transition, shall we say, into the world of entrepreneurs where I got made redundant from McLaren went back in as a contractor for two years in McLaren. And so my introduction to working for myself and doing all the taxes and the invoicing and a lot of stuff behind the scenes was eased in quite nicely. So I, you know, after 20 odd years of never having to worry about that because somebody else did it for me, I, I was eased into that world. Um, and then when I decided to go independent, I thought the best way to do this, I'm gonna make some recurring revenue from the, the offset I'm going to create an online course. And I spent a lot of time and effort. You wouldn't think it looking at the original versions of it, uh, but I spent a lot of time and effort building this thing that I thought was going to be my sit back and make me millions project. And they build it and they will come. And I built it. And a couple of people came along. And it paid for itself. And that was pretty much it. <laughs> and so it's that element of how do you go about what you do and having spoken to other people since having listened to people on podcasts having interviewed people on my own podcast and things like that that element of how you go about building a business how you go about building your own brand and how you go about reaching out and connecting with people and just asking and say and knocking on people's doors and saying you know any chance of a chat i'd love to learn from you i'd love to hear your, your thoughts and if they say no they say no so, you know, they're not, it's nothing personal. It's nothing, well, maybe, <laughs> but you can't take it personally. Nobody says it's personal to my face, but it's, uh, um, 
but yeah, it, it's those elements of you've got to have ambition in the early days in particular of, of going into the world of entrepreneurship, but there are ways and means of learning from others. You know, you can learn stuff for yourself and, and it, and if you're able to both financially, mentally, emotionally, <laughs> relationship wise, take all those hits, then that's great because you, that's a different type of learning, but there's no reason you can't accelerate that learning from other people. So, uh, that would be, you know, the way that I would unfuck things and I'm in the process of, of doing that right now is, is just trying to learn more from others and try to uh, uh, to collaborate and, and network out. Questions to Paul. I have one. <laughs> yeah, go for it, Frank. Um, how was this transition from F1 to the real world with you, with the business now? When you told the people I was working here, uh, was that really important for the people to know where you uh, coming from or it was only okay this is another company or something like that yeah it's uh, this is another area i fucked up as well <laughs> thanks for asking <laughs> um so what i did in the world of f1 um and, and for mclaren in particular was to take their ways of working and their methodologies out to wider companies so i've always worked with other companies about learning from f1 and applying high performance lessons so that part of it wasn't a problem where I probably fucked up a bit in the early stages when I left the world of F1 and went independent. It was in my mind. I went, I'm not going to rely on that. I'm my own man. I'm, I'm going to, this is all going to be about Paul Teasdale. And this is you know, the, the whole fact that nobody knows who the hell Paul Teasdale is or, or certainly didn't. Um, they will know the world will know, <laughs> but the, um, I didn't lean into the the backing of the brands and the backing of the the known things that i'd worked with enough and you don't and i've talked to other people about this about being disingenuous about it i never position myself of being from mclaren you know i'm not mclaren i don't work for mclaren i have experienced the world of mclaren i've experienced the world of f1 and i've learned from that and that, that i think has been a big learning for me is how do you actually you know you you've got to lean into the things that get you recognized and known and connect with people without being disingenuous about it. So that's my, le my learning. That's great. How to link this experience mm. in your past job with the re with the uh, actual one. No, this is really yeah. important for me, for me, for me as well too, because, because mm. I'm coming from the automotive industry and sometimes you, you, you say some names and the people say, ah, okay, yeah. maybe we can trust you. Maybe. Mm. Yeah. Uh, that's all you've got to create a connection with people and it's like if people know something then they can start to connect with you and they can start to trust mm -hmm. you so can i can i respond to what you said yeah uh because i think of course nobody knows who you are or who i am the thing is with let's say you can take the credit uh from the companies you worked for i think because it's let's say everything you've got in your backpack mm. And it's recognizable for people. So, of course, you're not McLaren, but you were good enough to work for a known brand as McLaren mm. because they let you in, they let you work there. And that's part of, let's say, your life experience, which makes a kind of, you know, it makes Paul uh, uh, Teasdale come alive beside the fact that his mom and dad called him Paul Teasdale. Yeah. So I, I think know. never ignore, let's say, the journey of the life you had so far. Uh, and of course, you, I mean, I left a big corporate uh, 22 years ago where I worked 18 years for, and I really thought, okay, now I know nothing anymore. I don't have the credit of the big company anymore. So, you know, the business card is just rule yep. instead of, let's say, the royal ahold. Uh, so I thought, oh my God, what's happening now? But then you find in the end, you find a kind of combination and a balance between this is what raised me. This is what formed me. This is what created my profile. Mm. So don't be too stubborn there and accept the fact that, I mean, these things happened in your life and they made you who you are today. Yeah. So don't be so stubborn would be my <laughs> uh, advice. It's only about you because no, nobody knows you, <laughs> but they will not, they will know you because of the journey you went through. Yeah. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate that. <laughs>